Hey everyone, today I wanted to show you some Python quirks. This talk is heavily inspired by the Watt talk by Gary Bernhardt he made about Ruby and JavaScript. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. Python 2 has some unexpected behavior, so let's dive in. Okay, the first one is a classic. Here we have a simple comparison. The values are straightforward, so you should be able to guess the result. If we run it, it's actually what we expect. True. But what about this one? It looks the same, but what will the result be? Let's check it. Some of you probably know it's false. This isn't actually a Python specific issue, but a standard behavior of the floating point arithmetic. The result will be the same in almost every programming language. If we print the result of addition, it's not quite what we expect. Let's check the next one. And this one is a Python thing. You probably know the walrus operator, this one. It allows us to assign a variable and use its value at the same time. It's pretty handy for if statements like this. So the example is simple and the output is expected. But what about this one? Shouldn't it be the same? Nope, that's a syntax error. While assignment cannot be used as an expression, the walrus operator cannot be used as a standalone statement. We can fix this by wrapping it in parentheses. And now it runs as expected. Okay, let's move on. This one is probably the easiest in the whole video. In this comparison, we're checking if a string is not none, and of course it isn't. But what about this one? Yeah, it's false now because, well, is not, is not, is not. Actually, it's because not none evaluates to true, like this. Let's move on to another case with the is operator. As you know, is checks of two values reference the exact same object in memory. So in this case, we have two numbers coming from different expressions, but are they the same object? Actually, they are, because Python reuses objects for small integers. What about this one? It looks exactly the same, except the numbers are bigger by one. But if we run it, it's false now. Why? Python reuses objects only for small integers, and turns out, 257 is not small enough. Okay, let's try this one. It looks exactly the same as the previous example, but no, this time the result is true again. Why? Because Python is smart enough to reuse objects for constant values encountered during bytecode compilation. Okay, but how smart is it? What about this one? This time, it's still true, since Python optimizes some straightforward calculations. And the last one, what about this? And it's false again. Python doesn't optimize in this case. Okay, let's continue with the is operator. If we have identical tuples, Python should merge them into a single object, and in this case, it does, so the result is true. What about dictionaries? Python does not merge them. Even if it looks safe in this example, merging mutable objects generally leads to terrible consequences. So the result is false. But what about this one? Frozen sets are immutable, so Python could reuse the same object for both values. But does it? Nope. The result is false this time. This one is a bit trickier. We have two names, A and B, pointing to the same string. Next, we use the additions equal operator to modify A. Will this change B as well? Nope. B stays the same. It's expected because plus equals on a string creates a new object, just like explicit reassignment. But what about lists? What do you think will happen? If we run this example, we can see that the second list does change. That's because plus equals behaves differently for mutable types. For lists, it's equivalent to an extend call. Okay, this one is probably the easiest, but it drives me nuts. Strings in Python are sequences. We can get the first character or iterate through them. But what do we get when we index or iterate? That's right, more strings! There's no separate char type in Python, unlike in most other languages. So, strings in Python are sequences of strings, which are sequences of strings, which are sequences of strings. <laughs> you get it. Okay, next one. We can multiply lists to repeat the same values. It's quite handy, but can lead to unexpected behavior. What will this program print? Not what you may expect. Every row now references the same list. 
To fix it, we can use assignment or force unique objects for each row, and now the result is correct. Now this is not quite a quirk, but it's a funny thing. What do you think this program prints? Yep, if you didn't overthink it, you were right. This just happens because Python concatenates adjacent string literals. And this is the exact equivalent to the following code. Moving on. In Python, an object must be hashable to be used as a dictionary key or set element. It should have a hash method, which implies immutability. So this code runs fine. And usually people say that hash is enough, like in this stack overflow answer. But what about the following code? This object has the hash method, but we explicitly removed the equality method. Will it run? Well, not this time, because actually Python requires objects and dictionaries or sets to be both hashable and comparable. Let's check some more examples. Can we add a tuple to a set? Yes, because it's hashable. What about this tuple? It's still hashable since all of its elements are immutable. But what about this one? Not this time. While tuples themselves have a hash method, it recursively hashes each element. And since lists are mutable, so not hashable, a tuple containing a list is also not hashable. Okay, and now the actual what moment of the talk. We have two empty classes, foo and bar. If we check if their instances are the same object, we obviously get false. But what if we compare their IDs instead? It should be the same answer, right? Wrong. It's true now. Does that mean that foo and bar instances occupy the same memory location? What? Let's compare two foo instances. If two instances of different classes have the same ID, then in the case of same classes, they should too, right? Wrong again. Now it's false. What? But let's try and compare just both cases together without the first statement. Last time it was true and false. Will it be the same this time? Nope. Now it's true and true. What? And changing the order of statements shouldn't matter, right? Well, yeah, but just don't try to guess. Now it's false and false. What? Okay, okay, now I'll explain why. In every case, we would expect the result to be false because each object should have a unique memory address. But let's see where that assumption breaks down. Here we get true. Why? It's due to how Python manages object creation and memory allocation. First, Python creates the foo object and retrieves its ID. But since we don't store it anywhere, Python immediately destroys it. Next, when it creates the bar object and by happy coincidence, it chooses the same memory address as the previous foo object. That's why the IDs match. This behavior is pretty much unpredictable because Python's memory management decisions vary at runtime. Even altering the order of lines can lead to different results. So the takeaway, don't rely on ID comparisons too much. All right, that's all for today. And if you haven't realized, this talk wasn't voiced by me. It was actually voiced by my friend Tokisuno, which is actually me. Not the guy who made the video, I'm just the voice. So you can look at my channel in the description. I don't really make content like this, but you know, I have a voice. So if you like that, then you can check me out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next one.